This is part three of 4.3 derivatives and the shapes of curves. In this part, we are going to be analyzing some different curves based on different given information. In question five, in each part, state the x coordinates of the inflection points of f. Give reasons for your answer. So we're looking for the x coordinate of the inflection point. But the tricky part for this one is our information is going to change. So we're looking for the x-coordinate of the inflection point of f. So that's our original graph. In each case, our original is what we're looking for. But notice in part A, we're looking at the graph as f. Part B, it's the first derivative. And part C is the second derivative. So let's tackle these one part at a time. So in part A, we are told that our curve right here, our red curve, is the original graph. It's the graph of f, meaning it's the graph of the original function. So we can take it quite literally from the graph and turn it into our intervals. So what we're looking at is the coordinates of the inflection points. Well, remember, inflection points, that's where concavity changes. So the inflection points is where concavity changes. So let's see if we can find those spots. So right here, it looks like it is concave down. Right here, it looks like it is concaved up. Right here, it looks like it is concaved down. So it looks like we have two inflection points if this graph is our original functions. And it looks like they will be at x equals 3 and x equals 5. It's asking us to give a reason, and our reason is going to be that's where the concavity changes. So we're looking at the basic graph of our original function. So concavity changes where the concavity changes. So that one we're good. Let's look at curve in part B. But now this curve, so this graph right here, is now the first derivative. It's no longer, theoretically, the graph of the original equation. It's now the graph of the first derivative. So we have to take everything one piece farther. So the inflection point, well, we know the inflection point is where the second derivative changes from positive to negative. So it would be where the first derivative is going to be increasing or decreasing. So if we're going to look at our graph as if it were the graph of the first derivative, then we want to look at our maximums of our first derivative. So let's see if we can figure this out. So right here at x equals 2, so we're looking for our max and our min values of our first derivative because that's where it's going to change from increasing to decreasing. So here we're increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. So that means our curve is going to have inflection points. Remember, remember if we take the derivative of an original where the derivative equals 0 is the max and the min, well, we're doing the same thing again. You're just shifting it down one. So if you have the graph of the first derivative, its max and mins will be the derivative of the first derivative equaling zero. Well, the derivative of the first derivative would mean that it is the second derivative equaling zero. So the max and mins of the first derivative will be the zeros of the second derivative, which will be our inflection points, which is what we want to find. So we're looking now for x equaling two x equaling 4 and x equaling 6 because the max and mins of our first derivative are going to be the inflection points. So let's try this again, but now we're going to make the assumption that our graph is our graph of our second derivative. So let's see if we can figure this out. So now we're looking for the graph of our second derivative. If this is our second derivative, then the inflection points are where our second derivative is going to change from increasing to decreasing, which means where it's going to change from being above or below the axis to above or below the axis. So start by looking for the zeros. So start by looking for where the second derivative is going to be zero. So I see three places where our second derivative is going to be zero. But if you notice right here, it is increasing and then it stays increasing 
meaning that it's above the x-axis and it stays above the x-axis. So there's no change from above to below the axis in this case. So that means that 4 is not going to be an inflection point because we need it to change from above the axis to below or from below the x-axis to above in order for it to be a inflection point from the second derivative graph. So that means that we'll have x equaling 1 and x equaling 7 as our two coordinates where we'll have it changing from increasing or decreasing and our reason would be because the second derivative is changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing whatever the case may be so that is where we're going to have our inflection points so three different considerations here based on whether we're looking at the original graph the derivative graph or the second derivative graph so let's see if we can look at part six and do some figuring to see what's happening in this one. So in part six, we have the graph of the first derivative of a function is given. So that means that this graph right here is the graph of the first derivative. Look, it's even labeled for us. So we have the graph of the first derivative is shown. So I don't know what the original equation looked like. I don't know what the original graph looked like, but I do know that right here, we're given the graph of the first derivative. So let's see what we can decipher from that to figure out. So in part A, it's asking us on what intervals is the original equation increasing? Well, if we have the graph of the derivative, then where it is above the x-axis, then the original would have been increasing. If we have the first derivative graph, where it is above the x-axis, that's where the original would have been increasing. So let's see if we can figure this out. So if it is above the x-axis, well, that would be from here, above, 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 stop, because it dips below, here, above, 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 and it looks like it ends at 9. So that looks like it's going to be from 2 to 4. Remember, these are all the x values, from x of 2 to x of 4. It's not the coordinate x, y. It's from x being 2 through x being 4. That's an interval. And then again on the interval from 6 to 9. And the reason is because that is where it is above the x-axis. If it had asked us for, it doesn't, but if it had asked us for the interval of decrease, well, the interval of decrease would be where it's below the x-axis. So that would have been from 0 to 2 and from 4 to 6. It didn't ask us for that part, but just adding a little detail in case you were wondering. Let's try the next one. In part B, it asks us, at what values of x does f have a local maximum or a local minimum? So if it's going to have a local max or a local min, that's where it's going to change from increasing to decreasing. It's also going to have zeros, but remember in the last one, just because it was a zero didn't necessarily mean it was changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So let's look and see if we can find those changes. So if I put it back here, we had our four through six increasing on the green and then decreasing from the blue. So we're looking to see where it changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. And it looks like we have three places. So that means that at x equaling two, four and six it works out to be two, four, six, that's okay. It's going to have a local max or a local min. So we found that part. On what intervals is f concaved upward or concave downward? Let's see if we can figure that out. Now this is again the graph of the derivative. So if this is the graph of the derivative, that means if we're looking for our intervals, we're looking for what? What does it mean? See if you can think it through. You have an idea? It means that we're looking for where it is increasing or where it is decreasing. So let's see here. Here is a decrease, and then it stops, and then here it switches to increase, and it stops. Here it switches to decrease, and it stops. Here it switches to increase, and then we have a little decrease, 
and increase. Okay, looks like we got a couple different intervals here. So concave up or concave down. So I'm just gonna split it. I'll do concave up over here. I'll do concave down over here. So concave up means that the first derivative is increasing and concave down means that the first derivative is decreasing. So we can figure that out from what we have here. So it looks like for our concave up, we would have from one to three. And then concave up again from five to seven. And then it looks like one more from eight to nine. And then concave down, it looks like we have from zero to one, from three to five, and from seven to eight. There we go. So now we're looking for where are the inflection points? What are the x coordinates of the inflection points of f? So we know the inflection points are where the concavity changes. So conveniently, I already have those marked. So our inflection points are where the concavity changes. Well, it changes at one, it changes again at three, changes again at five, seven, and eight. And where the concavity changes, notice is also the max and the mins of the first derivative. So there's several different ways you can find the different values. Okay, let's look at number seven. In number seven, we're told the graph of the derivative f prime of a continuous function of f is shown. So we have the graph of the derivative this time. So the graph of the derivative of f prime of a continuous function is shown. Okay, let's see what we can figure out here. So in part A, we're looking for on what intervals is it increasing? So increasing, what does that mean? What did we say in the last one? So it means that it is increasing when we are above the x-axis and it is decreasing when we are below the x-axis. So this is the graph of the derivative. So here we would have decreasing when we are below the x-axis. So like right here, here's the axis line. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll draw it in. There you go. Uh, where else are we below? We're below right here. Now we need above. So we're above right here. We're above right here. And we're above right here. Okay, let's put all these things together and see what we can figure out. So where is f increasing? So it's increasing. The original function is increasing when the derivative is greater than zero. So the derivative is greater than zero means that we are above the x-axis. So that would be from zero to two. That's this part. Then we drop below. So from four to six. Then we have a big skip and blow. And then from eight to infinity. See how this one sort of runs off and it says X keeps going. Whereas before we had it finishing so we're going to say it goes to infinity because it runs off the edge of the graph and it has the arrow for the x to continue. Okay, let's try part B. At what values of x does f have a local maximum or minimum? So it's asking us for what values. It's not asking us for the coordinate. What values of x does f have a local maximum or a local minimum? All right, what does that mean? So a local max or a local minimum, that's when the derivative changes from increasing to decreasing or from above the x-axis to below or vice versa, from decreasing to increasing, so below to above. So we can figure that out. So it changes right here. It was increasing, it was above the x-axis, now it is below. So it changes at two. Where else does it change? Looks like right here, it changes at four. What about six? Should we include six? Does it change from above to below? 
Yeshua does. It's a point of discontinuity, but it does change from above to below. Remember, this is the graph of the derivative. And then where else? It looks like it changes right here at 8. So 2, 4, 6, and 8 are the coordinates of the x value, the values of the x coordinate. Does that has a local max or a local min? Okay, let's try the next part, part C. On what intervals of f are we concave up or are we concave down? Okay, how can we figure this out? Okay, so that is where our slope is increasing or decreasing. So I'll separate it again. I'll do concave up over here. I'll do concave down over here. And that is where we are increasing or decreasing our slope. So this would be f prime is increasing in slope. And this would be f prime is decreasing in slope. So let me get rid of the drawings I already have. So I can draw you on some new. There we go. So where are we switching from increasing and decreasing? Well, let's do the best that we can to figure this out. So here we're skiing down the mountain. And then we have to stop and we have to get on the chairlift and we have to climb, ride the chairlift back up. So we were decreasing and now we have to ride the chairlift back up. So then we are increasing. So that's a change from decreasing to increasing. Okay, let's see what else happens. Where else do we change from increasing and decreasing? It looks like we're increasing right here as well. So let's see if we can figure this out. So we are increasing. We have an increase from, looks like this would be three. So three, two, six. And then something happens. There's that jump right there. But then again, it increases from six through infinity. And it looks like our only decrease would be from zero to three. There we go. And part D. What are the x coordinates of the inflection points? Well, what's an inflection point? An inflection point is where concavity changes. At six, the concavity doesn't change. It was increasing, it is still increasing. There's no change in concavity there. The only change in concavity happens at three, which is this one right here, because we were decreasing and we changed increasing. At six, we didn't change anything. We were increasing, we are still increasing. So what changed is right here at three. That's where we had our change in our concavity. So that means that our three is going to be our inflection point. All right, let's get rid of all that. Let's make some space and we're gonna draw a quick sketch. It's going to be a very basic sketch. We don't have a whole lot of information about the exact coordinates, but we have a little bit. So you're given one piece of information right here as a starting point, and that is to assume that f of zero equals zero. So what that means is if we start our graph right here, we're told that f of zero is equaling zero. So we have that as a starting point. Now what do we have? Well we know we have a maximum at two, four, six, and eight a maximum or a minimum I should say. We have a maximum or a minimum at two, four, six, and eight. Do we know which one is which and what is what? Well, we know a little bit. We know that we are increasing from zero to two. So that means that we're going up. Then we are increasing from four to six. And that means we have to be decreasing from two to four. And then we are increasing again from six to eight. So that means we'd have to have another decrease from six, excuse me, from eight to infinity we're increasing. So we'd have to have another decrease from six to eight. So let's just plot in what we know and then we'll start connecting our dots and see if we can get it. So we knew that we were increasing from zero to two. So let's just start our increase. So let's see here, I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then infinity. So we're increasing from zero to two. I don't have the y coordinates, so I can't even guess at what the y coordinates would be. We don't have enough information for that. So that's why I'm not putting a scale on the y. 
So we're increasing, so let's start increasing. So that would look like this. And we'll check in altered if we need to. So then at four, we know we have either a max or a min. So two, here's four. So it's going to be either a max or a min. We know that we're decreasing from two to four. So it's going to go like that. It has to be decreasing, we're going down. So it's going to look like that. Now what happens at three? Well, three is an inflection point. So that's where our concavity changes. We were concave down. So from three to six, we switched to concave up. So we were concave down. We're going to switch to concave up. So right there, there's our inflection point at three. Okay, we're making progress. We have another max or min at six. But notice there's that, that jump at six. So that means that something happens. Remember when we were talking about the derivatives, we said that we can't have a derivative where there's a sharp point. Well, right here, I don't have a derivative. I needed it to be a continuous function, but I can't have a derivative. So I think this is going to be a sharp point. It says that from four to six, we're going to be increasing. And it has also switched back over to that interval of concave up because we're in that three to six interval. So it needs to be concave up. It needs to be increasing and it needs to have a sharp point. So I'm gonna draw it like this. And then after six, well, six through infinity, we're still concave up. We know at eight, we have a max or a min. And that's gonna be here. I know that I need it to remain concaved up from six through infinity. So let's finish that sharp point, concave it up, and it's gonna look about like that. It's not perfect. If we had the Y coordinates, we'd be able to draw it a little bit more exact. We don't have the Y coordinates, so we did the best we could with a sketch. But that's about what the original function would look like. We don't have the original function, so we can't even type it into check. But based on the information we have, that's about what the original function would look like.